Hi, I'm James at Bespoke Airsoft and welcome back to another video. And in this one, we're going to be talking about the brand new Crytac release, which is their new P90. collaboration between three companies you've got Crytac you've got EMG and you've got Cybergun and they've uh, worked to produce uh, a new model which is the P90 it's not a new model as, as in it's never been done before but what they've done with this model um, specifically is actually pretty interesting so we're going to take a look at that today but for all in, uh, intensive purposes it's an AEG it's in a P90 format of course as you'll see um, mostly polymer on the body here and you've got the metal front section the metal rail there for your accessories. Now, <clears throat> they've got a simple MOSFET system included in the gearbox with this thing. It's got a quick spring change. It comes wired to Dean's. Um, so all these cool features that are a bit lackluster on other P90s, like the Chinese copies and the Tokyo Marui. By pulling the charging handles, you can actually reveal the hop-up there, which is a rotary style hop-up, which actually has a really good adjustment on it, and it seems to work really well. However, gets a little bit more interesting when we start talking about the magazine. So the magazine that the P90 comes with is a mid-cap magazine. It's switchable so you can actually switch it between a lower capacity and a high capacity with a little switch down here. So you can lock it to 50 rounds, which the real P90 would have, or if you unlock it, it's 200 rounds capacity. Now this is actually pretty phenomenal. You're getting such a huge capacity in a magazine because the thing that's plagued the Tokyo Marines is the mid-caps, which are usually the better mags, held about 60 to 68 rounds, roughly, off the top of my head. Um, and for the size of the mag that you carry, the high caps for those guns as well were always just, they, were, they just weren't the best. Um, to wind it and top it up, you know, if, if the mag is un unwound with a high cap, you'd have to take the magazine, magazine out to do so. So it was all a bit of a pain in the backside. Now on top of that, having a nice, reliable mid-cap magazine that's got a high capacity, it's also got a little switch here. So when the magazine is empty, it pushes down on a little switch found on the gun just here, and the gun stops firing. You've got the little switch over there. 200 round mid cap, of course. When it's empty, it won't fire. Job done. So empty mag detection is, of course, a really welcomed feature on this gun and it's great because as soon as you're empty the gun stops firing it's a it's a visual um and uh audible change because you'll be firing and all of a sudden the gun just stops working which clearly indicates your magazine's empty you take one out and you replace it there's no firing it afterwards trying to figure out whether you are indeed empty or you've got a jam magazine because with a lot of the early p90s the magazines would jam especially the high caps and the mid caps I think Silverback did a mid cap for it that always used to jam up as well. So you weren't actually sure when you pulled the mag off whether it was empty or not. But with this, it's transparent. You've got 200 rounds there. The gun will cut off uh, when the magazine is empty. If you're not firing anything, you probably found, you know, it's easy to see that you've got some kind of issue going on the magazine, but I've experienced none of that. Um, they do have a sticker on the side here saying 1.52 joules. That means because they normally come out of the box about 4 to 4.20 for the US market and coming into the UK they get a downgrade so they'll be doing about 340 to 350 FPS. Wired to Deans from the factory, you also get a little adapter in the box as well I think for the uh, the Deans connector but why you'd want to change to a Tamiya I don't know. Quick change spring there in case you want to change the power depending on your sights uh, limits because the, the way and how short and compact these things are they are perfect if not built for CQB. The P90 platform is one of those platforms that a lot a lot love to hate it. And you know, you've got the P90 by Marui, they did a high cycle as well later on. King Arms did one. You've got the uh, companies like Simon and JG and other Chinese manufacturers that have you know copied the Marui design over the years. Um, and they always had unreliable triggers and cutoffs, so sometimes they'd just go full auto, there's nothing you could do. You'd have to get a replacement cutoff lever. So that was a pain. 
And with the P90, if you don't already know, they've got two stage triggers. So you're on safe, you select semi-auto, you've got semi-auto, you select auto, you've got semi-auto, and then as you pull it further, you have full auto. Um, it is quite a travel on this P90 to go from semi to full auto on the auto setting, and it's a, a little bit disconnecting if I'm honest. Um, but that's not to say that you won't get on with it, it's just what I found. Like doing the semi and the auto, you really have to push past it, so you, what you end up doing when you want to, to go fully auto, you'll fire around, then there'll be a gap, and then you find the next sort of um, resistance point where you can pull through and it'll do full auto. The hop up on this was very, very good receptively out of the box. Um, we were using some 0.3 stack tests, which we're going to get to now. So first of all, chrono test 0.2 gram BBs uh, using a LEM 0.1 milliamp amp LiPo, and then uh, you'll see the accuracy test with the 0.3s with the same 11.1 LiPo. I did run into a bit of an issue. Um, I think it was the 11.1 LiPo I was using with the weaker spring compared to the factory setting. It was just overturning um, a little bit. So I would probably recommend using a 7.4 with this thing. But the full auto on 11.1 on this thing is very, very tasty indeed. Um, it was just overturning. So that's because they haven't got a proper MOSFET system in there that regulates the gearbox and can tell where the gears are and can apply and take the power off when it needs to. Which again, this is an expensive gun. You know, you're talking of 400 pounds plus when Double Eagle that we just did the UTR 45 for is 149.99. It's got a proper proper MOSFET system fitted as standard. Um, so the MOSFET system in this is a little bit lackluster. Um, as the same with all the Crytek guns, they've all got MOSFETs, but it's not really a proper, proper programmable um, fire control system. So we get to the test, then we get to the actual test, and we'll be back on camera to tell you my thoughts. Right now it is double firing on semi auto. It was doing this before when we first tested one. I think it's just because of the power of the battery that we're using. Um, and obviously the spring is downgraded because usually these are doing about 400 plus but for UK limits we've obviously got downgrade springs to put in there so they're 340, 350ish um, it could just be the LiPo is a slightly higher C rating than what they recommend but this is just because it lacks a proper MOSFET it's got a basic MOSFET in there as far as I know but having a proper MOSFET in there would obviously negate this because then the MOSFET can tell what the gearbox is doing and I think they've missed a trick here with a premium product it should probably come with that out of the box bit too much hot there so let's turn it down turn it down it shot worse turn it down a bit more let's go back up Seems like it's over hopping those point three slightly.
go further because I haven't got much hop on there, it's hopping point three is perfectly fine. I think the issue that we're seeing is it's it's slightly overspinning on this 11.1. Um, so you're doing like a half cock of the gearbox and I think that's when it's pushing one out like a little bit lower FPS but the, I don't know, perhaps the hop's just grabbing it a little bit harder and then it settles. So when I was able to just constantly bap, 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 you can see the, it flat, like flatten out um, and obviously got a lot better. So I think it's just the battery that we're using, we're asking a bit too much of it. But uh, 40 metres, 0.3 is, you know, slightly over hopping so it's more than capable of going to a much further distance. About 340 feet per second there, not too shabby at all. I didn't really put too much hop on for me to have to get the hop on the, the point threes. When I was testing this gun yesterday, and I have tested it over a couple of days when we've had them in just messing around, getting familiar with the products, of course, for when people have questions. Um, I never really had an issue. It was just lately, I don't know whether it's because uh, the downgrade spring that's in there and it's just slightly overturning for the, for the power. The battery was fresh off the charger today when I tested it, which could be the issue. Whereas yesterday and the previous days this week um, when filming, um, the battery wasn't fully charged. So that might be why it was a little bit better. So I'd probably stick to a 7.4. You're going to get a bigger 7.4 LiPo in the stop there anyway. And you don't need crazy rates of fire with this thing. But on a 7.4, the feed and the trigger system just seem to be more reliable. This being a licensed replica, um, all the trademarks are there. If you're a Stargate fan or a you know a sort of a sci-fi fan, you know these guns are used heavily, especially in Stargate. You know, for those of you out there that are fans of those old TV shows, um, you're going to absolutely love this. Not many people like a P90. I had a TMP90 years ago, and it was probably one of the best performing guns at the time that I had. Um, it just seemed to literally outperform most things out of the box, um, and it's one of those love-hate Marmite guns, I think. So it's an SMG that's like a ballpark configuration. Um, they're super compact, so the firepower, now you've got that 200 round mag and the empty cutoff and the high quality built gearbox compared to previous models um, and the easy to access hop, I think now has been the best time to sort of get into a P90 if you're thinking about one. It's so compact, I think there'd be very few guns apart from the really small SMGs like the MP7 which could compete in a very small confined space. It, you could you could use this as a pistol if you want. It's so well center balanced that the weight is always where it needs to be. So it's very nice and compact, very easy to use. Um, and even though I've picked faults with it here and there, just because I have to, because I say it as I see it, um, I would go as far to say that so far this is the best made P90 that any airsoft company has produced. I do reckon that you could get better performance out of this thing just using a slightly less powerful battery. Uh, and dialing that hop on it a little bit better. Now, when I was using the 11.1 earlier in the week and it wasn't having this issue, um, the rounds were coming out more predictable and the range on it, I was just like, we were all flabbergasted with it for the for the size of the gun. So I think just dropping down on the power so it's not over spinning will fix that and then you'll be good to go. This has been the P90 from Crytac EMG and Cybergun. Um, you'll find it, if not already, on the website very soon. Uh, available in store and online not a cheap gun by all means but it is quite literally the best p90 i think you can get and that anyone has produced to this day um, i would have liked to have seen a proper regulated fire control system in there and that would have just been the item on the cake and the gun would have been perfect but the way these companies operate that's not always the best thing so i hope you've enjoyed this review i hope i've answered all your questions if i haven't pop your questions down in the comments below and I'll do my best when I have time to answer them to the best of my ability. Um, like and subscribe, all that good stuff. It spurs us on to do more content for you. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.